Hello, I'm Ken Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chicago Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this current episode we are going to focus on ewe lamb management. Whether our replacement ewe lambs being retained on the farm or purchased to enter the flock as ewe lambs, we catch up with Dr Tim Keady. He discussed the importance of managing these ewe lambs, particularly during the first winter and early phase of life, what impact it has on production and productivity, and how we might go about achieving some key targets to keep these on track during the season. I'm joined now by Dr. Tim Cady from Chagas and Latin Ray. Tim, thanks for joining us on Ovicast again. Uh, no problem. Tim, we're going to maybe just focus on your own replacement and our management. Maybe just set the scene for some importance of managing our replacement new lambs and flocks. Why is it so relevant? It's relevant, Kieran, because your replacements is one of the main costs involved in lowland sheep production, and it's often a cost that's totally underestimated by sheep producers. Uh, if you want to, our data would show that um, the cost of a yore replacement is equivalent to about twenty percent to the value of twenty percent of the carcass, a lamb carcass that you'll produce during our lifetime. Therefore, if you want to reduce uh, the cost of replacements, there are two options: either increase the number of litters that she produces by keeping her on the flock longer or lambing her at a younger age or to use yos of a higher pro- uh, prolificity by which will have a higher litter size. Uh, nationally and from a survey that we undertook last year as part of the National Farm Survey we found that 52% of uh, sheep producers breed their own replacements and 35% actually purchase all the replacements. And of those that purchase their replacements, 27% will purchase hoggets only, while as 10% will purchase lambs, your lambs only, and the rest will purchase both a mixture of hoggets, your lambs, and adult yews. I think it's probably a stark figure it's right there about the cost of it, and it's probably a figure that most farmers aren't aware of. Look, based on your silver work, there's a lot of your lambs on farms that are being managed on the farm that they're going to actually become yews on. Just maybe we'll tease that out a wee bit more the effect management has and you mentioned longevity you mentioned output management of them young lambs during that first winter period has an impact on performance I know you've done previous work on this Yeah, maybe just give us some indication how that has an impact yeah we've done quite an amount of work uh, over the last number of years on that subject here that and right your replacements we've looked at the plain nutrition during their first winter we've looked at the plain nutrition during their second summer and we've also looked at the plains and nutrition during later stages of their life cycle when we looked at a uh, lamp at the performance of replacements during the first winter we found that increasing the plain nutrition during the first winter had a positive effect on the weight of the your replacement at the end of the winter period uh, of about five kilos there was still four kilos of that there at the point of joining uh, the following October. We found that they produced lambs are about 0.1 to 0.2 kilos heavier at, at replacement uh, at, at birth. And there was also evidence during the lifetime performance of these that there was less barrenness in these yews and they may have lasted longer in the yew flock. We also, as I mentioned earlier, did work looking at the uh, ma- grazing management during their second summer. And even during the second summer where we increased the amount of growth rate by higher grass allowances, while they may have been heavier at the point of joining, they did not have any beneficial effect in terms of lamb birth weight, the number of lambs born, or on longevity within the flock. So for us, the critical thing was the plain and nutrition during the first winter. Okay, you have to cover a lot of points that. <coughs> obviously, right, you mentioned the first one. Physically, yes, if we feed them better, obviously they're bigger, heavier yeah. sheep. Um, the second one, like the carryover effect it has on the performance of yews, is quite important. So it's the the birth rate effect, the barrenness effect, yeah. it's, it's the fact that there's a carryover from that first winter. Yeah, there's a carryover and if you can keep them in the flock by reducing the level of barrenness or keep them in the flock for an, an extra litter, then you're reducing your replacement cost. And that is a cr- cr- critical thing because replacements is one of the major costs in prime, prime lamb production or in sheep production systems in Ireland today. And you have also a more productive hobbit. Even more productive hobbit, okay. yes. Just like to go back on that one, you mentioned the weight gain. Look, a reasonable target, and look, maybe we, we'll take this back a step. Would it be fair to say in a lot of sheep farms out there, the replacement new lamb, certainly in higher stock ones, might be a second class citizen to the old flock where the priority is? Would it be the case in a lot of farms that they're not actually gaining weight over that period? There, there, there are many f- uh, flocks where they have your replacements either being fed poor quality silage if they're housed as a sold out, or they're out in paddocks where there's not an adequate amount of grass. 
uh, our estimation is that if you want a lamb to gain, and our, uh, my target live weight gain for your replacements is about 50 to 70 grams per lamb per day, which will put down about 8 or 10 kilos during the winter period. If you want them kind of lambs to gain them weight targets, they need to be getting equivalent of about 9 megajoules of ME per head per day. Okay, I like it. You mentioned the poor quality silage. Obviously, in taking that, you're not going to hit that kind of. Well, with poor quality silage, you have two factors: you have low digestibility, and digestibility affects both the energy concentration and it also affects the intake car- the, car- the intake characteristics. And actually, them lambs could be losing twenty or thirty grams per lamb per day. Okay, as well. Look, firstly, the big advantage to having that weight on them is they can afford either we run a bit tighter later in spring if grass was tight, but all managed separately. Well, well, the big advantage of that is that they're getting a bigger frame sheep. Uh, you're getting a sheep that's heavier, we'll say, by about four to five kilos at the end of the winter. And even when they're joining, they still have that difference in uh, live weight of maybe three kilos. While a lot of people will talk about the phenomenon of compensatory growth, while compensatory growth may occur, <coughs> they will only account for about 30 or 40% of the difference. The, the lambs that are fed that gain better during the winter will still have about 60% of the extra live weight at the end at the joining period well, uh, that they had at the end of the winter period. And that's an, You did mention that twice and it, it, it's another interest on oftentimes they say a good run that actually we're familiar with compensated goats particularly in cattle terms of that. When you did actually look at that in detail in that study you just mentioned that they never actually caught up fully. No, they never caught up fully. They st- they caught up about thirty or forty percent of the difference, but there was still a difference of about sixty percent, and uh, they still had the sixty percent of the extra gain at the end of the winter one at the point of joining in uh, late September, early October. So, in terms of interventions, look, a lot of flocks would be caught. The lambs are managed how they're managed. What can they do different if they're behind target, and is it worth assessing that in early spring? Well, what can they do different at the moment is uh, if, they're, if they're housed, they're still stuck with the quality silage they have, so the option they have is to go in with a small bit of concentrate supplementation. They need to have good feeding management in that the animals have got access to clean water and also they've got adequate feeding space. While people will talk about silage analysis, and I've seen in many situations where they could have silages with 75% plus DMD and be disappointed with the performance, and the performance is not the silage's fault, it's the farmer's fault, because in many, often you'll go into a shed and you'll see clean concrete in front of the feed trough. In other words, the silage isn't being pushed in adequately, not enough of silage is being pushed into the animals, you need to feed it at libitum. And certainly even in the case of ring feeders, maybe not been refreshed off enough clean Yeah, that. removed removed residue twice a week. So the bit extra supplementation from grazing management point of view, obviously giving a better run, maybe not making them. Well, the, the importance of the winter one management, if you do it correctly, you have more options during the second summer. A lot of farmers where they have sheep flocks and they've got a small amount of replacements have the option either of running the replacements after the sheep to graze down the paddock so they can be used as a, gra- as a management to- grazing management tool or secondly, some farmers will actually put the hog the yo replacements in with the flock of sheep with their lambs, so they have a bigger number of animals in the paddock, so they can move faster, so they're being grazed a bit tighter. Maybe Tim, like we've covered a lot of ground up, but <coughs> just to summarise, it does have a big impact on the future productivity of your flock, and they need to be actively managed. So you would recommend even a spot check on weights, look and condition them, and actually actively manage them, replace ones. Uh, just to handle them if you want to check them by waste but a good eye will know straight away whether your animals are performing or not okay so manage them keep them going accordingly you'll have more productive yeah, views yeah target eye weight gain during the winter is 50 to 70 grams per day and you like to have them doing about 100 grams per day so that they're up to about 85% of mature live weight, uh, mature weight when they're joining the ram for the first time at 18 months of age okay Tim thanks very much for some very useful information now. thanks We're going to finish the episode up at this point. Uh, I'd like to thank Tim for taking the time out to join us again. I think he conveyed a lot of very useful information. One clear thing is how we manage your lambs, particularly during the first winter and indeed in subsequent grazing season, has an impact on the subsequent performance as a EO. Obviously, they need to be managed correctly. Tim highlighted some key targets we need to work towards achieving and what the requirements are to achieve these. I suppose maybe a key point to take note of is it's no harm to assess where the EO lamb replacements are whether it be on weight or condition score at this stage of the year and actively manage them according to it. And it's a clear team in a lot of talks that we need to actively manage our stock. Again, look for any further updates. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chugga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Ovicast. Don't forget to tune in and subscribe to future episodes.